What is up, guys? From Celis Williams, aka the Swole Fester, here to educate you on health, fitness, social well-being. Here with my friend slash business partner slash coach slash white counterpart, <laughs> Brendan Teets, aka Aesthetic Strength. What's up, guys? We got a ton of content coming for you. We're down here finally in SoCal, yeah. and uh, if you are watching this video on his channel, then hopefully you saw the first part of this video because this is the start of a series, right? Yeah, correct. So basically, guys, what's going to be linked in the description down below is part one and part three of this three-part series and we're releasing it all on the same day and what we're pretty much doing guys is taking you through what our programming looks like that we both do for ourselves as well as our clients utilizing a dup sub max style system and the purpose of taking you guys through all these days is to lead into the next video series we're going to be doing where we talk about like how we manage fatigue and how we adjust our programming for fatigue so in order to do that we have to actually show you guys what our programming looks like. So part the, one, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and the thing about DUP frequency, or, or excuse me, DUP higher frequency templates like we use where mm -hmm. we might be squatting and benching three times a week and we might have a system where the program's set up with like strength-based days, hypertrophy-based yeah. days, and technique-based days. The way we manage that and the way we go about programming on these days will vastly affect the acute fatigue, mm -hmm. which we want to talk about that first and just the overall microcycle planning, which means, you know, planning of an individual training week and how we go about that for managing fatigue and then that'll take us into the next series. Exactly. So part one and three are going to be linked in the description down below. Those are actually going to be on Brenda's channel. Part one is going to be the intensity or the heavier, higher exertion focus day. Part three is the technique or active recovery day. And then what you guys are about to watch right now are going to be clips from our higher volume upper body focus day. Yeah. So go ahead and take it away, Brenda, get started as far as kind of like you can start with letting them know what is kind of like the purpose of this day. What are we really trying to go for? So it's going to depend on the athlete, but usually speaking, whether it's a powerlifter, bodybuilder, whoever comes to me, I'm going to have some kind of hypertrophy based day. And that's really what today is. Now that day may transmutate later on into a, a secondary strength day or like a strength volume day later on if it's a powerlifter mm -hmm. or it may stay a hypertrophy based day. It just gets a little bit heavier. But the, the purpose of today is to um, kind of get some variation in to build muscle in, in weak points. Mm -hmm. um, and so like if you watch the strength based day or that higher intensity day on my channel, the video, the first video, we were doing things that were really high intensity, very like comp specific or close variants. Yep. Today's our day to get out of that. Today's the day for the close grip benches, uh, front squats on yep. the lower body, the Larson press like I was doing today to you know increase range of motion of target like areas that might be weak points from a muscular standpoint and get a ton of volume in. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that strength based day, the variation in exercise is really going to come from, um, you know, like movement based stuff. Exactly. We're trying to fix movement. Yeah. Today we're trying to fix muscular weak points. Those things can go hand in hand, but they're a little bit different for how you got to program for it exactly. and you can't do it all in one day. So today's initial purpose, especially right now for all of us, or actually yours is a little bit different, so that's yeah. perfect. We're yeah. going to talk about that. But for me and my girlfriend, Kristen, who you're going to see in the video, um, she's we're both like kind of deeper in our off-season. We're really working on a hypertrophy right now, a ton of variation, a ton of volume. Mm -hmm. uh, he's near kind of the ending of a training cycle, so he's yeah. a little bit more comp-specific. It's still volume-based, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a little bit heavier and almost transmutating right. into that secondary right. strength day. For example, they had higher reps. I believe you had like, like sets of like five. I I had uh, ascending sets of six, five, and four on yeah. Larson Press, and this is the end of the block, so this is kind of the heaviest I've gone on yeah. this, and before that, it was like sets of eight and stuff. Whereas for me guys, today was, like I said, my comp-specific bench press. I worked up to a top set of three at RP7, and then had back down sets of five, which is still more like volume-based than on the um, higher intensity day, but like Brendan said, I'm closer to my meet. I'm actually going to be competing in December. They're deeper in their off-season, so therefore, I'm going to be pushing the volume more on this day still like they are, but with more comp specific movements now when we get to the accessory work that's where i'm still focusing on really trying to build up my muscular weak points like brendan was saying and for me and i'm sure brendan agrees as well for him this day is probably the most specific to the individual client whereas a lot of things we do on the intensity based day we can like for example almost everyone's going to get some type of benefit from like weighted planks things like that yeah. because we all have to work on bracing for the big three no matter who you are but if I have a client that maybe has to work more on like lat work, I'm gonna give them more lat dominant pulls on this day. Whereas if there's someone like me where they kind of like suck at like retracting like in the upper back, you're gonna have more 
upper back row dominant work on this day. So it really does come down to what the individual client's muscular weaknesses are for this specific day. And I think a good thing, like, like we can list out some rules here. Mm -hmm. uh, the first rule is going to come over exercise selection. So yeah. uh, more variation and more range of motion, especially deeper in the off season and or earlier on in a training cycle. Mm -hmm. So even though he's not very close to his meet, this is kind of the ending of a training cycle right now that we're right. getting close to with Marcellus. And we're kind of doing a soft peak just to increase intensity all around. Right. And then we're going to go back to like kind of a more deeper off season, right. beginning of a training cycle where, uh, again, the variation is going to come into play, more mm -hmm. range of motion, more volume. So you're going to see on this day, it's going to go back up in reps. And so that's going to kind of how it like transmutates over the, the training cycle with uh, hi, uh, hypertrophy based day. Mm -hmm. You're going to start with variation and really high reps and a ton of volume. And then as that cycle goes on, we get a little bit more comp specific or totally comp specific. Right. Uh, we keep the volume in, but it gets a lot heavier instead of doing sets of eights or sixes or whatever, we might right. get down to that, that three range and that five range. Now, and, and that's where that strength based day, that one might get down real low to like singles and doubles. doubles right. So that's how these days kind of benefit one another. Right. So that would be the exercise variation. Mm -hmm. um, now, when it comes to accessory work right. variation, this day is going to be a lot different, kind of like you were saying. Yeah, like I said, it's, gonna very, much, day. it's going to very much depend on, like I said, what the specific weak points that you have to deal with are. And that's what we're talking about the upper body day, the lower body day. Like, I think we actually have some clips of Kristen kind of working on some of what her yeah. lower body accessory work on this day looks like. And that can be you know, if you're someone where you have weaker quads, maybe you're doing some quad accessory work. Yeah. If glutes or hamstrings are the issue, maybe you're focusing more on gluten hamstring work. So whereas on like the first day, like I said, where some of my clients like accessory work may look very similar, on this day it's gonna be very dependent upon what their weak points are. Yeah, so it's really like movement based with the accessory work on that strength day. Yeah. And on today, a hypertrophy based day, whether it's lower body or upper body, mm -hmm. it's gonna be more like muscular weak points. Right. So you're gonna see things like like the rear delt flies, you're right. gonna see like like very different rows variations you're gonna see a ton of like arm work nice just things down. to add muscle onto the frame in those areas you might be lacking and just to kind of overload from a different perspective as where the accessory work on the strength day is gonna be more like like movement based like planks yeah. you know side planks uh, Bulgarian split squats for pelvis alignment and, yeah. and things of that specific nature specific to the functions of the big three on that first day yep yeah. and so um, now we're gonna talk about like like fatigue and some of that but I, another thing I want to touch on for today like another rule is the volume is going to be high and so is the exertion. Right. So it's very important when you set this up into a training uh, plan into your micro cycle, I would almost always plug your, your highest volume and highest exertion base day, your hypertrophy day really, mm -hmm. uh, or your high volume day, whatever you want to call it after your strength work. Right. And, and it, um, that's, that's always going to be with the catch that you have like a, a tertiary, like squat and bench right. day to follow that. That way you kind of get a break. Uh, in between and you don't go straight into that strength based day. Mm -hmm. So for instance, say someone's squatting and benching three times a week. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go strength and then like that technique or like lower exertion day right. and then the hypertrophy based day yeah. because then when we come back to the beginning of the week, that hyper day is going to be following or is going to be right before that strength day. day. And you're going to be wrecked. wrecked. <laughs> yeah, completely and totally utterly wrecked. And that's why even for my clients, who don't have like that third day, whether like that third technique based day, whether it's due to scheduling or they just aren't at a point where they can recover from squatting and benching three times a week. I still like to give them about like a day or two of rest after this hypertrophy based day yeah. before they go into the heavier intensity day for that purpose and reasoning. So I guess just to kind of take you guys through our workout, I'm going to explain each one and kind of the thought process. We're going to do this quickly, but just to kind of give you an idea for me today was all about Larson pressing longer range of motion, working on just pure upper body like volume and hypertrophy. I had ascending sets on the bench press of six, five, and four. Uh, I went all the way from 295 to 315 and then 325 for my top set of four, which were all PRs, which was pretty cool. Uh, Marcellus, who's deeper into the training cycle though, now he started off with really high reps on this day. I think we started you this cycle with sevens with like and sixes, sevens, yeah, right? Sevens and sixes, and then it got down yeah. to like closer now to fives. Now for him though, we have the comp bench already back in, and the reason why is because he just needs a ton of technique work on that, and he needs to build muscle in this new range of motion because we've increased his bench grip width. Right. So on this volume day, we're working with him on that, that competition bench press, mm -hmm. but it's still good volume. He had sets of three for his top set, right? Right, and then back down back sets down of five. five. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now my girlfriend, Chris, and she had close grip bench. She has issues with stability in her bench press. She misgrooves a lot of her top sets and stuff. And so something that's really good for that is a close grip bench, which increases the range of motion and puts a 
very large stability demand on the bench press because you get so much deeper onto the chest, you really have to control that shoulder. And so we had her doing close grip bench for a ton of volume work. And again, we're probably going to get that pretty heavy at one point. We might touch some like sets of four mm -hmm. and three on there just right. to really overload it. But we got to start with that volume first. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the thought process is you have to select the exercise that makes sense for the person. Right. Marcellus needs more practice with his new bench press grip. Mm -hmm. Kristen needs more practice for stability. So we're going to overload that with volume and then progress it into like kind of like strength volume eventually. Exactly. But it's yeah. never going to get as heavy as that strength based intensity day. Right. Because that's the thing that's important to keep in mind, guys. A lot of people that get caught up on wanting to do too much in one day, but the whole purpose of the DUP style is to give each day like the specific things you're trying to work on. This is still a more volume focused day. If you're doing just as high of exertion on this day as you're on day one, then you're kind of making the day one pointless and doing the DUP style pointless. Yep. Now the next exercise we went to, we're all doing some dumbbell bench. Yeah. Um, this actually worked out like today. A lot of our accessory exercise made sense for everyone. Mm -hmm. We did just for the sake of filming uh, simplicity, kind of right. do the same movements. Mostly mm -hmm. it would be actually pretty individual if we all just did our own workout, but we couldn't do that with having having to film, right. but it was kind of cool because we all needed the same exercises in a way, but for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Dumbbell bench for Kristen provides a huge stability demand. She's really actually bad at dumbbell benching. Mm -hmm. For me, dumbbell benching is great for volume without getting aches and pains because I'm old as fuck and I'm just really <laughs> broken. Uh, and for Mar uh, Marcellus, the same thing. He, he has a problem with packing his shoulders yeah. and the dumbbell bench really forces him to have to stay in that position without like that shrug up motion right. that we used to see come from him. While also allowing me to get more total volume in on the muscles involved exactly. in the bench press as well. So it's kind of getting like that two for one deal as far as the flat dumbbell press. Yep. And then uh, pretty much any upper hypertrophy yeah. workouts got to include dumbbell overhead press. You've got yeah. to isolate the shoulders in a pressing movement. Now I prefer dumbbell OHP almost always over barbell OHP and that's right. just because it's a better deltoid movement and isolator. Yeah. I think powerlifters get a little too caught up in movement sometimes yeah. and they could kind of take a page from the bodybuilders book yeah. and really work on, on exercises I think are going to target those muscle groups that they're really trying to get. More and if so. you want some more delts in your press on the bench press, you're really weak right off of the chest. And when you're in that deepest shoulder uh, extended position, we got to flex that shoulder mm -hmm. out of there. Dumbbell OHP is going to, I think, be better than the barbell OHP. And, the, and then you also have to, once again, think about, like we're talking about, you know, fatigue and recovery. I know yeah. that for me personally, when I'm already benching three times a week, trying touching to touch a barbell, trying to touch in that. barbell <laughs> press as well, it's just, it just doesn't work. Like it's going to fatigue me very quickly to where even that technique based day on that third bench day feels way more tiring than what it should. So yep. it was like, there's, there is such thing as too much barbell work even for a power lifter. Yep. Now the next movement we went through was uh, uh, the row and we all did this in kind of an arched position mm -hmm. and aligned the seat to where we were pulling right in line with where we want that lat engagement on the bench press. Mm -hmm. So I think this movement's almost universal. Like it's a universally great exercise to target the lats, the traps, the rhomboids, all the pulling musculature yeah. in that bench press specific movement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, you could see actually the cool thing too that happened is we realized when Marcellus was doing this, he was, he got a ton of lat contraction, but his upper back, the traps just weren't firing Yeah, they weren't correctly. firing off. And this is once again, what talking about the importance of the specificity, because from this, we learned that I need to start doing more rows. They're going to focus more on the upper back and tracks. You guys know that I have like stupid strong lats. I can do like weighted pull-ups with like 200 pounds. So it makes sense after doing years of pull-ups that my lats are very dominant. But now in order to kind of get my bench press to that next level, I really got to get like my traps and my upper back to fire off the way that I want it to. And he really has, you can actually see in his bench press, he manifests by pressing. Like when he goes through that press, his shoulders really pop out because mm -hmm. the, the traps and the rhomboids can't stabilize it. And then that's why we ended up having you do uh, some reverse flies yeah. more in that horizontal plane where you're really focusing on scapular retraction yeah. as where I was doing some kind of like lat slash rear delts. Uh, single arm pull downs, pull downs. almost call them. Yeah. Right. Where it was kind of like a hybrid for my lats and my rear delts, which is more of a weak point in that, that pulling, um, range of motion. Yeah. So we kind of switched it up there to just focus on scapular retraction for him. And these are the kind of things you want to think about. If you got some big ass lats on you, yeah. you're kind of lacking that upper back musculature and that connection back there. Then you want to overload that and pick an accessory exercise. That's going to target that. Right. And then we pretty much finished up. I want to say like that was just for some arm work, right? Like the, we had for the triceps delts and arms. Delts. Yeah, and we finished a bunch of juicy yeah, work. triceps and the biceps. And this overall one is actually going to be really good just for overall joint health. I think a lot of oh, people yeah. underestimate how like bicep curls, tricep press downs, that's going to actually help you. Yeah, there's such thing as going too far with that, but even like um 
Brittany, I believe you started off kind of just doing some tempo work, right? To kind of get your elbows yeah. feeling good. And then we went into doing some actual tricep press downs. And then we did um, some bicep curls. And overall, once again, just adding more mass to those areas. Like bigger triceps is never going to hurt your bench press, right? Yeah, Bigger never. biceps is never going to hurt you with like your deadlift. So, And I think this is probably actually the most common problem I see with younger powerlifters. Mm -hmm. They pretend they do this to themselves. They pretend yeah. they do this accessory work. Yeah. But every time I'm at a powerlifting gym, it's yeah. so rare I see anyone yeah. doing this. I mean, it is like one of the most rare things. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, but powerlifters are so lazy with accessory yeah. work. And I feel it. I am too. After you do the big three this much, like it's fucking tiring to do sure. boring sure. dumbbell curls. But it's so highly important. And yeah. it's highly important to do them correctly and really push it. Yeah. You know, get higher exertion. Yeah. You know, go close to failure. Do yeah. high volume. More reps, sets of 12, more 15. sets. Gradually increasing the weight over time. Almost in a sense, taking your accessory work as seriously as you do the big three. As hard as that is to yeah. do mentally, it really does pay off with overall injury prevention and just letting you lift stronger for longer. Yeah, and you guys got to remember, I don't want to get too in-depth with the science here, but the way force transfer works in the body is the yeah. tendons store that energy and then transfer it to the muscles. Mm -hmm. And whenever we slow down contractions, it promotes a lot of tendon health, so to say. Exactly. So it's going to keep the joints a lot healthier and more friendly when we're getting these like you know slower controlled bicep curls and stuff right. compared to the more ballistic rowing and benching and, right. and even squatting, supporting that squat bar, especially when we lose that rack position. Exactly. Those things are beating up those arm tendons and whatnot and so we got to support that with the accessory work and it's easy to get away with this i think when you're yeah. younger but man try powerlifting for seven years like i have and it doesn't feel <laughs> too great especially when you neglect some of the stuff that i'm trying to teach you guys to do yeah no yeah. it's de definitely worth doing guys and i think that's pretty much all we wanted to cover with this yeah that's pretty much work. it yeah um so I, I think the other video should be up at the, I think the third one though is going to come up in two days two after days. Yeah, this okay. one. So, part so we'll one go back be, uh, and link it, I guess, in this video maybe. Yeah, yeah. Part one will definitely be linked in the description down below. And guys, just in general, aside from this series, if you're not subscribed to this guy already, I know quite a few of you already are. Definitely do it easily, in my opinion. Some like the best content on YouTube. I've I do a ton eating. of full day of eatings. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Full day <laughs> eating vlogs, show you what car he's driving. No, but seriously, like, you're not gonna regret it, guys. If you guys enjoy my content, you're gonna love his. Like I said, in my opinion, um, best content there is on YouTube. And I've thought that even before we started working together. So you definitely won't disappoint as far as that. But yeah, just be on the lookout for all the content we've got coming. You got anything else to say, man? No, man. That's no? it. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Hope See you guys enjoyed later. the video. If you did, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I or my white counterpart can do to get better. <laughs> like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later. See you guys. Hey.